just highlighted something important here, which is this serotonin issue and other neurotransmitters too can be a vicious cycle in the sense that if you have gut infections, reducing stomach acid levels, now you've got this malabsorption issue. So you're not going to get the aminos anyway to manufacture the neurotransmitters. So you could come in and you could use amino supplementally to try to spot treat. But in reality, if you don't fix the infection, creating the malabsorption in the first place, it doesn't matter how well you do on the diet. It's not about what you eat. It's about what you digest from what you eat. And I think that's the important piece of the conversation that's missing with people is they focus on do this food, do that food, but it doesn't take into account. Are you actually absorbing and assimilating that? And we know based on Dr. Wright's work and his amazing book, why stomach acid is good for you that by age 30, 40, 50, 60, and beyond, you make less stomach acid just with age alone. And that doesn't even account for the fact of modern life stress, uh, circadian rhythm issues, adrenal issues, not chewing your food, that kind of stuff. So irregardless of the lifestyle factors, just age alone is enough to create a bigger problem. So let's just run down the list real quick together here of too low of a level of serotonin. Now you may see various lists across the internet. Justin and I found one that we like from a respected source. So I'm just going to kind of run down the list here of too low serotonin. Uh, of course, depression, everyone thinks about that, but also anxiety, insomnia or sleep problems, nervous or worried, poor response to stress, negativity or pessimism, irritable or impatient, self-destructive, potentially even suicidal thoughts, low self-esteem or self-confidence, you feel worse in the winter. So you could call it a winter depression if you'd like. Mm -hmm. yep. Anger or rage, explosive behavior, inflammation. Here's one that's interesting. We need to, I think, talk about this further. PMS. And then OCD or eating disorders as well have a link to serotonin. So the PMS is interesting. What, what do you think the mechan mechanism is there? Well, a lot of female hormones like progesterone, for instance, um, and or just healthy progesterone estrogen balance have major effects on basically they're like mono amine oxidase inhibitors. So essentially they almost are like mini antidepressants. They help kind of keep a lot of the neurotransmitters in between these post and presynaptic synapse. So you kind of have this presynaptic synapse. We have a post synaptic synapse, and this is what's called um, the synaptic cleft, right? This is, these are where the neurotransmitters accumulate between the two. Okay. And things like progesterone, for instance, they have a mild um, serotonin reuptake inhibition effect. Now, when you do medications, the problem with medications, the longer you keep those neurotransmitters between the synapses here, the faster those neurotransmitters are recycled and broken down. That's why over time, people that are on antidepressants or SSRIs, their dose has to go up, not down especially if you don't fix like underlying root issues. So I think a lot of these hormones like progesterone, we know is a GABA chloride channel inhibitor. So GABA is big because it promotes relaxation. The more relaxed and calm your nervous system is, the less chance you're going to be burning through serotonin because you're less stressed. And there's a monoamine oxidase inhibition effect, right? MAO inhibitor. So it's almost like a mild antidepressant in a way, for sure. Cool, cool. Totally interesting.